Number 29. During a circus act, one performer swings upside down hanging from a trapeze holding another, also upside down, performer by the legs. If the upward force on the lower performer is three times her weight, how much do the bones, meaning the femurs, in her upper leg stretch? You may assume each is equivalent to a uniform rod of 35 centimeters long and 1.8 centimeters in radius. Her mass is 60 kilograms. All right, so first let's detail a simple free body diagram. All right, so the, uh, this, we'll say that this point represents her uh, femurs, okay? Now there's a certain weight, right, pulling her straight down. That's equal to W, uh, W is equal to mg. So what's the uh, weight of the performer? 60 kilograms, right? They told us right here in the problem. So why don't we just, let's just bang out the weight here, right? So it's gonna be 60.0 times 9.80. All right, so the weight is gonna be 60 times 9.8, 588. All right, so this is 588 Newtons. Now they told us that the, um, that the upward force on the lower performer, right, is gonna be three times her weight. Now, if you just think about this, remember back to some of the problems we've done in the prior chapter, chapter four. This force here is like a couple, right? This this uh, connection between the lower performer and the upper performer is almost like a coupling, right? It's almost like a, a rope or a string or a, a chain, right? And remember, we were calling that force the tension force, okay? It's important just to kind of give us some context for this problem. So really what they're saying is that the tensional force in the lower performer's um, femurs is going to be three times her weight, all right? So her weight was 588, so simply plug that in and let's just find the tension now. So this is going to be three times 588. So 1760, so we got 1760 Newtons. Now here's the thing, this is the total tension, right? That's the total tension that her femurs experience, but how many femurs does she have? She has two. Right? Assuming she has two legs. So the upward force then, right? If we if I detail another picture here, the total force is 1760, but since there are two femurs, this total force is evenly distributed over the two femurs. Alright, since I'm trying to find the change in length of the femurs, I really need to focus on one femur at a time. Right? I need to find the total change in length of one of the femurs. Okay? I mean, you could do the total and then just take your answer and divide it by two. That you could do as well, but I think this makes a little more logical sense. So let's take the 1760 and divide that by two. We get 880. Okay, so each femur, all right, has a tensional force of 880 newtons. All right, so that's great. So now, um, if I look on the right-hand side, I just got that out of the way. Uh, what formulas am I thinking about using to solve this problem? Well, you have to think about what's the nature of the question like. Well, the nature of the question, they're asking us to find a change in length, and the the, the object um, is experiencing a tension force or a tensional force. Therefore, we have to be using Young's modulus formula. Okay? If you notice up here, I know it's a little small, but it says that this is for tension and compression, Young's modulus. Okay? So let's write that formula down. So it says that the force is equal to Young's modulus times the change in length divided by the initial length of the object multiplied by the cross-sectional area. So what's the force on the object? Well, we're talking about a single femur here, right? So that's 880 Newtons. What is Young's modulus for this case? Well, go to the table. We have a bone in tension and Young's modulus is 16, all right? So it's 16. Remember, all these numbers here are multiplied by 10 to the 9. All right, so we have a value here of 16 for Y, that stands for Young modulus. That's 16 times 10 to the 9. The change in length is what we're after because we're looking for how much do the upper leg stretch by. And uh, now what we are looking for, uh, uh, the initial length, sorry, of the, of the uh, femur, it's said to, you may assume each is equivalent to a uniform rod of 35 centimeters long, okay? So here we have, we gotta convert that into meters, so just move the decimal place two places to the left. That's great. And now we need the cross-sectional area. And I notice I just put a triangle up here, but that has to be the area, all right? So cross-sectional area, did they give it to us? No, they did not. But remember, the femur is a bone, and bones are generally circular. So I have to make that assumption. Um, otherwise, it's gonna be, I wouldn't even know what formula to use. So, uh, 
the radius they told us of this circle is 1.8 centimeters, but I need to convert that into meters. So just move the decimal place two places to the left. So that would be 0 0.0180 meters. Now to find the area of this, or the cross section area here, it would be simply the area. Why am I keep drawing a delta sign? Area is equal to pi r squared for a circle. So the area will be equal to pi multiply by 0 0.0180 squared. So let's see, what do we get for the area here when we plug it into the calculator? We get pi times 0 0.018 squared. We get a value of 1.02, so 1.02 times 10 to the minus three. And that's in meters squared, great. So this area now I can plug in for my area in the formula, right? So let's do that. So 1.02 times 10 to the minus three. And now let's clean it all up, right? So we have 880 newtons of force. Let's do 16 times 10 to the nine times 1.02 times 10 to the negative three, all divided by 0.35. And we get a value of 4.66. It looks like 4.66 times 10 to the seven times 10 to the seven multiplied by delta L. Now I wanna find delta L, so simply divide this out. Remember, delta L represents the change in length, and that's what we're looking for, times 10 to the seventh. So the change in length of the femurs will be 880 divided by 4.66 times 10 to the seventh. And we get a value of 1.89, 1.89 times 10 to the negative five meters, all right? So really not that much. I mean, it's a fraction of a millimeter, at the, you know, so it, it, it's like a hundredth of a millimeter. So not really by that much. All right, that's what we should expect. So that's that. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Really hope this helps you out a lot. Please remember to subscribe. That would help us out a lot. And uh, I look forward to helping you in the next lesson. Take care.